Hey guys, got level here, and uh, it's 2024, and I've been thinking about different ways of displaying stuff on screen when it comes to live streaming. We've seen overlays, regular overlays, we've seen images, videos, we've even seen 3D overlays, really, because I made videos about uh, Polypop. Polypop is a broadcasting software that runs on a 3D engine, so that's the 3D for you. But today I want to talk about using an actual 3D software to do some renders, and then how we will basically fit the 3D aspect of something like OBS Studio to the 3D image or video. So this is not a tutorial or anything. This is basically me thinking out loud and uh, sharing that with you. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So here's a scene that I created in Blender 3D. And basically I blocked out the space just like I would if I was making a 2D overlay. So this is gonna be an intermission screen. This is where the webcam should go approximately. And on the right side, I have those three bars that are gonna be like labels bar. So recent subscriber, recent follower and stuff like that. And then I put this spot up top here for the chat. Don't pay attention to the little capsule things. Uh, it's just decoration. <laughs> so with a software like this, I have the advantage of, of course, being able to move around and have all sorts of angles. The question is, once I bring this to OBS, how am I gonna match everything? Also, of course, I'm gonna have like pretty good graphics. This is um, just for the textures. If we put the EV rendering, so this is me working in real time and I can set a bunch of stuff. I can even set this to cycles and I should get a more accurate rendering that looks a little bit better. Anyways, I already went ahead and actually rendered a couple of images and this is what they look like. So this is with denoising, so it's extra smooth. I actually don't like it because I didn't put a lot of time into the textures so they look a little too soft. I actually like when it has noise, just like this. Okay, so I can have effects like depth of field and stuff like that. My emitters, so my my light materials are actually like affecting everything around it. Anyways, there's ways to have really, really cool renderings, but also having different angles. I think that's the most important part that we're gonna see today is how I would make it so that I have multiple angles. So let's open up OBS and set that up. So let me go ahead and create a brand new scene. Let's call it 3D overlay. Now we're gonna add those images. Of course, those are just images. So we add them as an image source. We go find where we have it saved. And for the flat one, it would be super simple, right? If you're using something like Stream Elements for your alerts and labels, you can actually already upload this directly to Stream Elements. Would you like this? Let me, okay, I will upload this. <laughs> I will upload those images so you can get them, okay? So check out the link in the description. There will be an imager album with all those images. So if you want to use this actually for your stream, you can do that. So in Stream Elements, I could probably create a new overlay. 1080p resolution, press start. Um, we can click plus, add static custom image, set the image, upload it, or just drag and drop it. And just like that, I don't know why it's not showing. Oh my God, Stream Elements. Oh, okay. I refreshed the page and it appeared. You can decide to do this separately. Basically, you can have uh, your labels on a separate browser source and your chat on a separate browser source, or you can do, as I did here, upload the image and just add things directly. So that's basically the browser source method. Your stream chat, for example, I would probably place this here and then find, to be fair, I probably wouldn't do that. I, I hate doing this, but you can do this and then delete the image so that you have a 1080p browser source that already has everything you need. Recent followers, latest follower, nice. I don't like doing this because working in this Stream Elements editor is kind of a nightmare. I want the option to add individual filters to those things. So I would probably literally create an overlay for each one of them, an overlay for my chat, an overlay for my labels, and then I would add the rest in OBS Studio as a browser source. If you don't use Stream Elements, basically it's the same thing. You just copy the browser source from Streamlabs. And if you use something else, then well, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, it's called Starfield chat. I'm not sure that's my main chat, but let's copy it and let's add it. So plus browser source, chat, boom, bang, play around with the size and pray that it works. Okay, I hate how this looks. I'm gonna save it. Now I can add a new browser source, then play around with the size. Boom, we got it. So I would set it like this. And just for the sake of tutorial, I'm just gonna duplicate this. All right, pretend that this text is correct. <laughs> Okay, and I would probably add my camera here. Oh, hi, T's I. I would definitely right click and flip it. Now, depending on what effect I want to have, because obviously this doesn't fit perfectly, I would probably just make it fit as much as I can. We're actually gonna crop it and then we'll add a shader filter plugin to round the bottom side of the rectangle, or we can do a full rounded rectangle if we wanted to. Something I probably should have done when I rendered this is add a just a plane that would represent exactly where the webcam is just so that it could cast a shadow. So the webcam would really look like it's part of the scene, right? Our shader filter is not gonna take into account the cropping, so we need to put this in a group. 
let's group it cam group nice now let's go filter again shader filter plugin for this watch my other videos on it user defined shader load shader from text file and we want one of those rounded rectangle something rounded rectangle per side that is precisely what i want so corner radius bottom oh never mind this is working okay cool all right so let's say i want this 52 and this one also at 52 there you go of course uh there's the drop shadow plugin i believe nutty just made a video about one check it out and yeah this is how i would fit it and just like that you have an overlay of course you would be more meticulous you would probably add a scroll filter to this like this filters scroll boom boom horizontal speed just a little bit what that looked like that looks good nice and you would probably call it a day okay this looks pretty decent again those images will be free uh, check them in the description now let's say that i have an image that is not flat like that because cool obs is like it's allowing us to do all this right this is easy easy let's uh switch the image so i'm gonna double click click browse and we're gonna pick one of those that one really like that one this is where as you can see it is it becomes immediately less friendly in a way i'm gonna start by grouping up all three of those labels i don't know if that's an, a good idea yet but let's just do it all three of them right click call them labels all right so they're together now and i can add a filter to this group i can move the chat out of the way and we're gonna start with the camera because i believe it's one of the most obvious ones again we're gonna use the shader filter plugin for that you can duplicate the one you already have and switch out the text or just add a new one boom bam probably name them load load and uh yeah what is it corner pin i don't remember what it's called corner pin right there so this is the corner pin with just the values which i don't do not like and then there's the corner pin underneath that with a dash instead of an underscore and this is with the sliders i'm all about the sliders baby so top left what are you doing okay we just need to place this where we want it to be and we're gonna scale it up and we might even scale it up even more just to make sure that everything is covered. So basically anywhere you might want your pixels to go is covered within the boundaries of where the webcam is. Let's do that. So left X axis here, Y axis there. Let's go to bottom left while we're at it. Okay. Okay. So where eyeballing is by the way. Nice. Okay. 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 So far so good. Where's my top right? Okay. Top right. Y. So I'll admit you need to maybe have an eye for perspective, but that's all it takes. That's all you need. This is definitely one of those tinker with it until it seems right. I'm making a tutorial. I'm going to go fast. I'm actually not going to use this for my stream, at least not for now, but I'm testing the concept. You know, I think that's pretty cool. I have a um, vignette effect on my camera, which is why you're seeing a little bit of transparency here. I don't dislike it though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now same thing for the chat filters, except we're gonna go that side. User defined shader and rounded rectangle. No, wait. And corner pin, corner dash pin, which is covering everything. Now, I guess the advantage of using stream elements here is that you can change the theme of the chat to have a solid background. You know, that effect that we all love. Click save. And now we just have to place a big rectangle. Doesn't really have to be perfect. Go back to custom chat, save again. And just like that, it works. Finally, you wanna do the same thing for the labels. Hopefully putting them together was worth it. Corner pin. Now this might be a little difficult because of the transparency, but we're gonna make it work. Oh, and I believe we did it. Now, there's going to be visibility issues. You might be like, oh, we can't really read the chat or blah, blah, blah. But it's a concept. It's a concept. And I think it looks pretty decent. Now, keeping in mind that Blender is, well, the software that I use here can also do animations. The only thing you need to be wary of is if any of your animation of whatever you rendered has to be on top of your OBS layers, then it's better to have it on a separate transparent layer. You know what I mean? I made sure that the capsules are not on top of this, even though you can see it here. I made sure that that capsule over there is not covering the text, right? Anyways, again, just a concept. I might work on it and actually come up with better 3D looking stuff as long as I know that you guys can follow up with, you know, setting them up with the shader filter plugin. Check out the link in the description if you want to have those. We have the simple ones and then we have the tilted ones and there's that one and that's it. In the meantime, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter and I'll see you all next time. Go out there, make me proud, get a level, out.